Look what Lauren did. She put the time clock out in the shop to provoke me to run around going doo 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 I'm being trolled by my own wife unit. Do, 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 do. It's, it's kind of like the phone from back in the day, but a little bit different. Hello, everybody. Good day to you. Welcome back. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of uh, work on this uh, Subaru Outback over here. It's got the 2.5 liter four cylinder. Uh, I think it's an EJ25 engine. We performed a bunch of normal Subaru repairs on this. It had some uh, valve covers that were leaking oil. Needed some spark plugs. Um, a couple other things I forgot. Oh yeah, yeah, put some wheel bearings in the front of it. And uh, one of the concerns that the customer had uh, brought to our attention is they heard an exhaust leak or a noise or a rattle of some sort. Now, through previous inspections, I have found the issue. Uh, we do in fact have an exhaust system leak, but let's get this thing up in the air. We're gonna take a look at some rust down below and uh, I'm gonna show you what I plan to do about this leaking exhaust system. So, stay tuned because this is going to be a fantastic Rubisu slash Subaru exhaust system repair video. There we go. Okay, she's up in the air. Lock is set. Let's set it down. On the locks for safety. I think I missed that one. Try again. Yeah, that one's not hitting. Front row, I'm out of adjustment again. We'll bring it down a notch. Literally. I'm gonna bring it down one knot. Don't go. Yep, both sides hooked up. We are safe, good to go. Okay, so what I'm prepared to do here is gonna be an actually a, a, a rather unorthodox repair. Uh, what we're gonna notice is we've got a lot of rust and corrosion here. Uh, for example, we don't even know what size those bolts are because those are no longer bolts. They have been oxidized away to a point where those are never gonna come off of there. Now, if we look back a little bit, we can see where there has been a, uh, a repair patch job on this muffler right here. So we got some tape looking stuff. Looks like it's high temp of some sort. Got some little bands and some, uh, some screws and some bolts and that is securing all the separated and broken stuff on the muffler. So we don't have a leak back here. But if we follow this pipe all the way past the, uh, the northern rust here, we come up to this location on this rear, uh, I think this is a catalytic converter. We come up to right here and look what we see. There's a big old crack running all the way down and around, all the way up. And it comes through on the other side and almost makes a complete circle right here. So if we take a look at all of our fasteners and the rest of the system, again, we have bolts that do not have a size anymore. We've got a bunch of rust and corrosion in here at the seal. So if this were to be removed, we need to cut these bolts off just to get this off of here and then we can throw some new seals in there. But the problem is, is this component right here is part of this catalytic converter, which means we've got to come all the way up here to unbolt it. And we're less than confident that that's really the ideal way to uh, make this thing stop leaking exhaust. So in an effort to save uh, several hundred dollars, I'm going to attempt to melt all this metal together uh, with my welder, and we're gonna seal it up that way. And that will be sufficient to solve the problem until the vehicle's owner is ready to commit to a new exhaust system, uh, which we're not gonna do that at this time. I'm just gonna weld it up and we're gonna send it on its way. So that's the plan. Now, naturally, that's not a proper repair. So I'm willfully performing an improper repair. However, for the circumstances, I believe that that is fitting and will suffice uh, to meet our end goals here. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's go ahead and just kind of get started here. We're gonna throw, throw a ground cable on that exhaust. That should do it. So it should be noted that I did check this material and it is somewhat magnetic. So that's not like full on stainless, although this does look stainless. So I believe I should be able to weld this uh, with the MIG. Um, on that note, I actually did order a starter TIG welder for such things uh, for when I do get into some of the stainless steels. However, uh, being 2024, they, uh, they said they had piles of them ready to go and I ordered one and now they're going, uh, yeah, they're back ordered. So I actually don't have my TIG that I wanted to, uh, to try out for those, uh, such things. So we're just gonna have to do with the MIG welder. 
Uh, having said that, this is gonna be a little sloppy because this MIG is not the greatest welder, but I'm gonna do whatever I can to make this the best, uh, best weld possible. So safety squints, everybody, get your helmets on. Let's go ahead and get started right here, right now. How'd it do? Yeah, it's welding. Kind of. Well, it's better than nothing, so this is what we're gonna do here. Yeah, there's definitely some level of stainless going on here with this, because these welds are, they're looking actually quite terrible. But I'll live with it, because it's the cheap way. that looking <laughs> looks like a molten waterfall of, uh, of metal yeah the slags not looking good there's definitely stainless here Take that. Okay. Says I. Uh, there's a little bit of a crack left over here. I need to kind of buzz that together. And then uh, I think it's pretty much full coverage here. Oh, burnt a hole through it. Front row. That's a hole. Okay, now I gotta weld that hole back up. Crack was rusty. So this is literally the ugliest thing ever to come off of a welder. I'm aware of that. I uh, am no welder. I've uh, expressed before I can muddle my way through this, but 
I can achieve the goal, but I'm welding the wrong material with the wrong welder, probably on the wrong settings with the wrong wire, without any shielding gas too, which is uh, not ideal, but it does work. It just doesn't look good at all. And it's probably not structurally sound either. However, it's more structurally sound than a crack and it's not gonna leak, so uh, I guess that works and it's correct and it's that's right. So that's what we're gonna go with because it's cheaper than a whole exhaust. Um, if you guys don't like that or wouldn't want that done on your car, that's fine. But uh, that's what this guy wants on his car, so that's what I did because that's the cheapest way to achieve the end result. So now, let's go ahead and let her down here and we're gonna find out if it's gonna leak or if it's not gonna leak. Okay, back out at the lift. Non-subscribe button. <laughs> Let's go ahead and run it up. Uh, the joke is, is the other lift buttons have a little sticker on it that says subscribe, and this one doesn't. So I call it the non-subscribe button. Button. Uh, that does not mean you should unsubscribe. That's just my passive uh, way of asking you, the viewer, who has not yet uh, engaged with uh, that channel feature, to consider subscribing to the channel. Anyway, Rubisu coming down. Let's go ahead and fire it up and we're gonna see if that thing leaks i think that's down enough dave is this thing ready to rock and roll can i start it yes okay cool just checking he was working on it you gotta make sure you never start another technician's car it's alive holy smoke look at that literally smoke okay that's nasty. All right, let's run it back up and we're gonna check down below for additional leakages. Yeah, I was at the dealership one day and I had a used car that I was processing to put out on the front line to resell. It was in the shop on a Friday. We had fluids out of it. A salesman came into the shop on Saturday when nobody was in the building, let the car down, started it up and backed it out so a customer or a buyer could test drive it, and there was no oil in the engine. It was a diesel BMW. that They had a rod knock on it before it left the parking lot. And then of all things, management was mad at me because I shouldn't have left a car in my shop, on my rack, in my stall, alone for the weekend without oil. So my choices were either uh, don't bring the car in and get started on it and waste a bunch of time on Friday or secure it where I know it's safe from salesmen and then leave it there after I got started and somebody came in and literally stepped on somebody else's toes and they blew up a $56,000 diesel BMW yeah uh, that hey, uh, salesman man salesman no but this well this salesman just couldn't think it was a thought process, like, hey, I wonder if I should be in there. That's like me going into his office and rummaging through his desk on a Sunday afternoon because I, I thought I needed a Sharpie. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like that, except that Sharpie, when I broke it, cost 50 something thousand dollars. It was actually like 24 for the engine, but still, you get the point. Yeah, don't do that. If, don't, don't touch another technician's stuff. You, you never know. Anyway, I'm doing the feel for scalding hot air test method here. I hear nothing, I feel nothing. We have no leaks on this uh, converter slash muffler slash resonator, whatever this is. I think it's just a converter. Uh, either way, we have no leaks here. This is a successful repair, and that will conclude uh, my segment of the repairs on this particular Subaru. That's also gonna conclude this uh, somewhat short video. I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to close this one out. Uh, I will do such things as always by thanking each and every one of you guys for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed this situation. Uh, please feel free to weigh in in the comment section down below on what you think about my strategy for providing a, an exhaust leak repair on, uh, on this guy's Subaru right here. Uh, I realize that some people don't like it. I realize that there are actual welders here that are going to scoff at that and call that uh, child's play rookie work. And, and it is because number one, uh, I don't weld. Well, I don't weld professionally. Uh, that was somewhat uh, either it was either very galvanized or it had some stainless in it um, That welders not set up for what I did, but it did it. That's why it's ugly I have done better welds with better material, but in this case uh, I did what I had to do So again, let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below uh, Do not forget to engage with that like and subscribe button wire down there 
And most importantly, before I go, I would like to remind each and every single one of you guys to have yourselves a fantastic day. See you guys later in the video. End of Rubisu Outback 2.5 liter EJ. End of exhaust repair. End of Bosch welding. In the video. That's about to haunt my head forever. I need to have a chat with my wife.